I am always telling you to leave your phone downstairs or put it on do not disturb and don't look at your phone overnight. And last night, today, is the perfect example of why you should do this because you either found out the announcement last night at 10 o'clock or this morning when I checked my phone and went on Twitter and kind of really wished that I hadn't because, well, that'd be really absurd. What are you doing to us? Why are you doing this to us? Are you literally just trying to take a bad situation and making it worse? Anyway, to update you on the current situation, if you do not know what has happened, because a lot of things have happened very, very quickly. Um, last week the Scottish exam results came out and lots and lots of people were unhappy. Um, a very brief overview of the problem is that lots of results were downgraded but in less well off areas the top results were downgraded by 15% and in better off areas the results were downgraded by like 6 or 7%. So there was a big discrepancy in um, schools that are in rich areas and schools that were in not so well off areas and high achieving students in uh, schools that were in less economically well off areas uh, were hit the hardest for this. So there have been lots and lots of discussions about this and yesterday at about four o'clock the Scottish Government, the Scottish Secretary of Secretary um, announced that any results that have been downgraded will automatically be upgraded to the teacher predictions. So any results automatically, it doesn't matter whether they're happy with their results or not, whether they got into university or not, they're, they're just gonna get upgraded, just like that. Um, any results that were, any results that were given that were higher than the predicted grades, um, they stand, so nobody's results are gonna go down, but only roughly a quarter of the results that were downgraded are now automatically being changed and upgraded for everybody. Which, good for Scotland, well done then. This would have caused a massive problem um, because if a university has one single place and they're trying to compare a student from Scotland who's had all the results automatically upgraded and a student from England who's had the results standardised, it is not a fair comparison. Um, at about six o'clock last night, so that, happened, that announcement was up four o'clock yesterday. At about six o'clock last night, off call announced that they were not going to be doing the same thing and they stand by their standardisation. And I was like, oh, right, fine, went and had a glass of wine and went on with my evening. And then, you know, didn't really look at my phone again. 10.30 last night, Gavin Williamson comes out with an announcement, which is that an additional route for appeal is going to be using your mock grades. So it's not like the Scotland situation where um, anyone, any results that are lower are going to be automatically moved up. This is going to be an additional route for appeal. In addition to the two other routes to appeal which were in the video, the pre-prepared video that I had already done which was went out this morning. So this is another route for appeal. Um, not a single teacher I know or a single teacher I've seen on social media is happy with this or thinks this is a good idea. And I'm not 100% sure that Gavin Williamson knows what mock results are. Um, maybe he got confused and meant that the teacher, the centre assessed grades that teachers had agonised and thought long and hard over. Maybe that's what he thought he was talking about. But that's not what the announcement was. It was for mocks. And initially the announcement seemed like it was just referring to A-levels, but there was a little bit of an input update coming out that maybe it's going to refer to GCSEs as well. But that has not been confirmed yet. So he has taken a wildly unfair system, the standardisation of grades, but at least it was wildly unfair to everybody and made it uneven and unequal and messy and even more unfair than possible because there are so 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 many problems with mocks so i asked on instagram and i asked on youtube if uh how many of you revised for your mocks because a lot of people would just be kind of like you know not revising for their mocks they can happen at literally any time of year um and some people just go into them kind of like um not necessarily blind, but having done no vision so they could see which areas they're weak on. Some schools will have told students these are the topics on your mock, go and do them. Um, mock papers are also, sometimes they're based on um, previous year's exam papers 
and a simple search of the internet may not come up with the exact paper or the exact mark scheme but will at least give people a clue as to what some of the questions are. So I also asked that on YouTube and on Instagram. Did you cheat in your mock? The wording is that you can use valid mock results as an appeal. Now what are valid mock results? Now at this point there is no point asking your teachers, there is no point asking your school, there is no point asking the exam boards and there's probably little point asking off call as well because they don't know. This announcement was made at 10.30 last night and you can kind of like see the panic um, in this announcement that you know Scotland made an announcement at four o'clock Everyone looked at Gavin Williams said and said, what are you going to do? And he thought, oh, i come up with a plan then. And this is the plan that they came up with, valid mock results. But what is a valid mock result? There is no centralised database of mock results. So I can see loads of schools, loads of teachers just going into SIMS, whatever reporting system they use. I used to keep all my um, mock results on an Excel spreadsheet and just changing them all to A-stars. Yes my entire year 13 chemistry class got eight stars this year i can see that happening a lot this system is rife for abuse there are so many problems with it how do you prove what the mock results were because you generally get given your papers to take home and to revise from the schools aren't going to be able to turn around to the exam board and go look here is the mock paper that they sat and it is marked and because well who still has those anymore. Getting hold of the mock results might actually be not very easy because if, you know, a teacher has put their results onto their work laptop and then they're currently in Spain on holiday for two weeks and they don't have access to their work laptop, well, you're not going to have access to that grade or that teacher's not going to be able to go through with the appeal because we didn't see this coming. Nobody saw this coming. So if the only place that the mock results are stored are on a teacher's computer and that teacher is currently on holiday for one, two, three, four, five weeks, well, what is going to happen in that circumstance? Generally, the school has a um, uh, like a centralised record on SIMS or whatever recording system for these sort of results, but, well, not always. Mocks are used for a range of different things. Sometimes a teacher will give a mock because they want to give the class a little bit of a, a boost. So they'll give an easy mock, they'll mark it easy, and then everyone will go, oh, actually, I'm doing a lot better than I thought. So it, sometimes they use it to give a little bit of a boost. Sometimes they use it for the opposite reason, to scare classes a little bit. So they'll mark it hard, put lots of really hard questions in there, mark it hard to encourage the class to use more. There's lots more that goes on behind giving a mock than students generally realise. It's kind of like, am I just going to give a whole exam paper? Because generally, until the end of year 13, you haven't covered all the year 13 content. So there will be very little point where you will have sat a whole paper um you might have sat like um you know a year 10 paper or a year 12 paper but it's not generally going to be like a whole paper because that covers the content from all of the course and when well, March you probably hadn't finished the course or had any time to revise so very few schools are going to have like um, actually sat a whole exam paper. They might have sat kind of like, you know, part of the exam paper but said don't worry about this question or they might have sat kind of like an AS paper or a unit one paper just covering the, the um, year 10 work or just covering year 12 work but that's still not an A level. So those mock results, while they're a good indication, aren't necessarily the best indication. Some schools, some teachers make up their own mocks. The exam boards have databases of questions and you can say, I want one question on this topic, one question on this topic, one question on this topic, one question on this topic. And you can build your own mocks. But for those, what grade boundaries do you use? If you're like using a mock but you're leaving out questions, what grade boundaries do you use? Um, there are so many problems with this system and I do not understand why they've gone with mock results instead of the results that your teachers put forward for you. Um, so this is where we are at the moment guys. Um, on the plus side, I'm hearing good things from UCAS. 
they're saying even if your results have gone down one grade, even if your results have gone down two grades and you're a little bit or a fair way off your offer for university that because they've got lots of space this year they are letting people in with lower grades. So I'm hearing positive things coming from UCAS. They're saying this is going to be a really really good year for home students. Um, so again I've said this before, I'm going to keep saying this the whole way through. If you do not get the grades that you need and you're a little bit disappointed, but it's allowed you to progress on to the next stage of your life, if I was you, I wouldn't bother appealing. I would just um, take these grades, get a bit angry, send some angry things on social media and then, you know, move on with your life. The any results from 2020, it's well, 2020 is a fairly easy year to remember, isn't it? So, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, people are going to look at those results, and because of all of the mess that all the changes, the the awful system that was in place, that I'm um, sorry, I don't think the results are going to be as valued as the 2019 results or hopefully the 2021 results and it is going to be things like you know if you're doing your GCSEs this year your A levels are going to be much more important if you're doing your A levels as long as you've gone into that degree course then your degree course um is going to be more important so that is where we stand at the moment guys um and unfair system but was equally applied to everybody has now become a wildly unfair and uneven system which is rife and open for abuse Yay! I'll keep you updated with anything else that I know, but I'm really, really glum and sad and... Ouch. Mm, love you too, Krim.